pan and he goes, yeah, come on out. He had fucking 13 cans of beer in each hand, you know. They went out and he opened the back and the lights went on and it was nice, it was plush looking in there. She oh, went in and said, machine. boy, this is nice. Joey went in and I grabbed him on the way in. I said, Joe, bang her. He goes, yeah. I said, make sure you bang her. He goes, oh, all right. So we close the door. Next fucking thing I know, the van's going like this, and I figure he's hammering my young son. He's <laughs> getting laid for Christ's sake. That's great. I open the door and look in. Me and Schultz and Maddox and all look in, and I go, what? Her fucking nose is bleeding. And I look like, what happened? And he goes, nothing. She went like this, and even when I went, yeah. She pulled her. <laughs> fucking right hand, he broke her nose. She was just sitting there shaking her head like, I don't know what she wants. I said, Joe, you're supposed to be sliding the salami. And he goes, what? I said, nah, Judge, I'll have to talk to you later. Let her out of the car. Let her take her to the medic. She needed stitches in her face. She was all fucked up. She got married later. She met a fucking Puerto Rican guy who was a half-wit on drugs. Married her, gave her four kids, and then shot her. <laughs> so that was a sorry fucking way to end everything. But Howard always hated me after that. It was like when we were watching Shane. Howard and his little boy he brought his little half-witted son. The fucking kid was an idiot. He really was. He come down out of a tree and looked at us. You know, it was like weird. And we sat him in there and said, "We're going to put on Shane." And Howard was like, "This is like me and you, son. I know we're, yeah, we're have a farm. Here. We're going to bond." No way does that boy show his face. Alan Ladd rides in on a horse and all, and fucking Alan Ladd was only four feet tall, and he was on a pony, but nobody ever knew that. And then, when he gets underway, Alan Ladd goes into the barn and sleeps that night, and little Joey, the little boy, comes out. He's like 12 or 11. He comes out and walks to the barn, looks in, and he's like, How you doing, Joey? I said, no, that was me. And he goes, I can tell. So he comes in and, you know, they talk and all. And then the mother comes out in a couple of minutes and says, Joey! And he goes, Mom, and he, she comes, you know, he runs out and she says, What are you doing out here in your pajamas? And his pajamas are like humped up. <laughs> Fucking a hole in his ass, like a 30 millimeter cannon. And now, Alan Ladd's in there, like, talking to me. <laughs> 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 Fucking Howard looked at me like, fuck the hole. He was just crazy. He hated me. He looked at me like, you fucking idiot. I said, no. And then they had Tony Stan. Jimmy said, that's how it was. That's how it was. That's how it was. Fucking Howard went to bed. You did put him to sleep. He never talked to me after that. I did. I, I couldn't help it. He, he, he was something to play You went with. there, Mark. Yeah, uh, town in Tawanda. Or wa yeah, Tawanda. And there's a beer thing there. And I go in and Merck gets out. Joey gets out. Joey grabs a case of blood. Merck goes and picks up a case of Michelob. And they get in the Well, you know old fucking short socks here. He looks like, what are you doing with Michelob? Merck goes, that's what I drink. And Joey goes, this is half the fucking price. And Mark goes, I don't care. I like Michelob. And Joey goes, you're a fucking asshole. And he goes, I don't want to see you drinking any of my Mick. Joey goes, fuck you, I'll drink it if I want. And the gosh behind the counter is looking at me like, you're going to pay for these stuff? They're, fucking, they're going to kill each other. Mark's going, stay away from my Mick. And Joey goes, fuck you, I drink Bud. I was lucky to get out of there without the cops coming. I remember when we started working together, me and Joe, it lasted about three hours, us working together. He always wears a mask.
I turn that light off on you, you were stuck up there. Cut it! Statue of limitations run out yet? No. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, we're good on that. This kid, Russell Stocker, that hung with me and Joe, he was like Hugh's age, but I never liked him. He was a fucking halfway. But we decided one day we were going to play like Russell or something. We're going to hang the bad guy that steals everything, you know, robs horses and all that shit. So we told Russell, like, you be the burglar and you come in with your guns and all. And he said, okay. And we all had them little cap guns and we are shooting at each other. And we got around to Elmer's Ice House and he had a little shed there. And we were shooting back and forth and all. And then he ran and got up on the roof and she was shooting and I was shooting. And then we said, that's it, you gotta surrender. And he said, all right, I surrender. And Norman said, let's get him. And we ran up and there was a roof up there. And Norman said, let's hang him. And he looked at us like, hang him. I said, no, nah, it's all right, we're gonna put the rope around your neck, but you're not gonna hang. And he said, oh, tie it around his neck, put it in the knot. And then Shu just pushed him off the roof. The fucking thing, when he went down, swung, and then the whole fucking place came I remember going down, hitting the ground. I didn't know where I was. I was laying there. Well, that night, his mother and father came around and said, Look! You did the roof He was... She looked at me like I, I don't remember. I said, we were just playing cowboys and Indians, and he was an Indian. The old man said, get up there. I was in for a week. We got him up, we tried to hang Russell. So I never really liked that fucking kid. I didn't have that hand quick. I really do. I think that was so fucking smart. Of me. <laughs> I was so good. I mean, why not? You, know, you hammer a fucking baboon to the ground, beat him up with a bottle. What the fuck? Prince out with somebody. I got a buddy of mine that refers to him as moon crickets. Fucking moon cricket. Yeah. It's in a Japanese camp to do this sort of thing. They, uh, you get a free ticket. Joey with his scratch and sniff. Scratch and sniff? Free ticket? And they tow it back. And one is able to drink. But uh, Billy Foss met this girl, you know, and Uncle John said, Oh, Fred, she's a very nice woman. She's a little older than Billy, and she has a daughter and all, and he would really like to get involved, and I said, oh, that's good, John, and I invited him to the house, and they came, and they, you know, they had a couple, like a cup of coffee or something, and everything was fine, and everybody was like, John said, she is a very nice girl, Prez, and I said, good. <laughs> And then it went on like a couple, like maybe a month or so, and all of a sudden I look out and John's going, she's a fucking pig. I said, who? He goes, that fucking girl. She's kicking Billy out of the house. And all of a I said, really? And the girl had, which I didn't realize, like Tommy has now, like a video cam. And they had it <laughs> set up in the room. <laughs> like Tommy is and now. Billy came in and sat on the bed and said, Come on, honey, let me hear you sing. And she said, I have to have a microphone. And he said, I got one. And he flipped his flies open and sprung out the banana. And she went, That's not a microphone. He said, Yeah, it is, honey. That's okay. That's what you're supposed to use today. And she went, Shall we gather at the river? And he said, Yeah, you can gather at the river. Now put it in your mouth. And her mother walked in the room. And that was the end of the fucking uh, relationship right there. John walked in, sucker punched the old lady, knocked her on her fucking ass.